Welcome back to another episode of Real Talk. I'm your host, Steph. And today we have a very special, talented, and inspiring writer, actor, filmmaker, musician, et cetera, et cetera. The list literally goes on and on. Um, Daniel <laughs> York Lowe. <laughs> um, and just actually a quick side note, um, I recently found out that you're one of the authors of The Good Immigrant. And I was like shook uh, because it's one of my favorite books. And honestly, I think it's one of the best books that um, I've read yeah. so far. Uh, but yeah, that's just a quick side note that I've oh, yeah. Um Anyways, just to start us off, um, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I grew up in, uh, in the West Country. Uh, my father is from Singapore. Uh, my mother is white, British, so I'm, I'm mixed race. Um, I, you know, I had a very uh, traumatic childhood. We moved around a lot. There was a lot of very overt, quite violent racism at school. Um, and then, you know, I, I kind of like, it, it's I, probably the opposite of the model minority story, to be honest. I, I, I was terrible at school. I, I couldn't, didn't get any qualifications. I was in trouble. I got expelled all the time. Then I was a kind of drug addict and a petty thief for a little while. And I, I, do, I, I mean, you sometimes see, you know, people, people like Tom Hardy say, oh, oh acting saved me. And it's not yeah. really the case with me. I kind of think. If anything was going to drive me back to a life of crime and drugs, it was probably acting in fairness. But but no, I I I I kind of you know got it together and became an actor, and then and then and then like I said, a lot of things followed on. I was probably a musician first. I used to play in a punk rock group, and then then I became an actor, and then you know fr- from that became a kind of filmmaker and writer and stuff. And and yeah, uh, it so it followed on from there really. Yeah, yeah, um, and obviously. Uh, as you said, you're doing a lot of different things and yeah. you started off as a musician and then so you went into writing, directing, et cetera. And you're also very, very involved with the British Asian community. Um, so how did you actually get into all these things? Because you said, I mean, you started off um, uh, with like music. Um, yeah. You know, what made you decide to like then suddenly pursue a career in acting? Right. Well, so I was I was playing... I was playing in 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 a, in a in a kind of psychedelic psychedelic punk rock group, and and I I was had a lot of problems with with with, with drug addiction, and I ended up in a rehab center. And I need there was a girl in the rehab center who was doing doing drama at the college, not drama school. This is like this is like further um, further education further education college, the one before university, basically. Yeah. You know, kind of, and she. She she said, I'll come and see my play. So I, I went to see her play. I'd never really been to the theatre before. She didn't, you know, apart from one school trip, she Shakespeare when I was 14, which was awful. Um, and she was doing this amazing play by uh, John Guare, who the guy who wrote Six Degrees of Separation, but there wasn't Six Degrees of Separation, it was another play. And it was it was an amazing, I mean, I, I was just kind of taken by the idea that the set was just all these boxes and they moved these boxes around and became these different things. And the dialogue was very snappy and punchy and funny. And I just thought, wow, that looks amazing. You know, <clears throat> and maybe if they let me on the course, I, I can play guitar in the, in the, in the band for the musicals. And, and it didn't work. I, I, I kind of ended up acting. And then was a year later, less than a year later, I was at drama school. So, so that's how that happened basically. Um, and I, I mean, I, I think it's great that you're very open about, you know, your upbringing and also, you know, your struggle with drug addiction as well. Yeah. Um, I guess, how did you manage it and how was it like going through it? Because I guess a lot of times when young people go through it, you kind mm. of close up and you don't really share it because yeah. I guess, especially like coming from um, an Asian background as well, you know, it's not. It's bit it's a bit of a taboo essentially, right? It is a taboo, and it's interesting that that, that we kind of have this idea that it doesn't it doesn't go on in, yeah. in people of our background. Where, whereas actually, if you look at our history, if you look, there, there would have been no opium wars if it yeah. wasn't for the fact that, that the Chinese, particularly, I think, have 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 an immense capacity for addiction to anything. Really, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, drugs, gambling. <laughs> making money, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it, it, it's, we're, we're, you know, um, so I don't, I mean, I'm probably very, very lucky because, because the way, the way um, funding uh, social services has gone in this country in the last 30 years is I sat down with the theater director 
uh, when I was working at the Royal Shakespeare Company a few years ago, and, and he, he asked me how I became an actor. And I said, well, basically, when I signed up, to, well, first of all, I was in rehab, right? Mm. I was in rehab because at that time, social services would pay for you to go to rehab. Yeah. And then I got on a part-time course at the Further Education College course, which I could do while I was claiming benefits. Then I got a grant to go to drama school. All of these things are gone now. All these things are gone. Yeah. So I, I, I don't. I, I think for young people addicted to drugs now, I think it's very, very hard. They have to work with a with a, with a key worker and fill out all these forms and attend all these appointments. Yeah. You know, which 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 your average young person ho- ho- hooked on drugs is going to find difficult to do. You know, because yeah. they live in an unmanageable lifestyle. It's 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 very very d- difficult. So I consider myself very fortunate, really. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm kind of like. Yeah, I, I don't know. That, 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 that there's a lot. Of, you know, I could sit here and say, "Well, I did this and I did that," and that makes me, you know, that makes me like, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. That makes me kind of like I've defeated my demons. But you, yeah. you know, I've been very lucky. That's the fact of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and there is a lot of luck you need in the world, generally. I think. Yeah. I think what you said about, um, you know, especially how. Uh, back in the day you know you have all these like support and grants and things for you to I guess get out of you know yeah the drug addiction but nowadays uh, these things are all gone I think it, it's a bit it's really sad because yeah. you'd think that in like the like today's society we're more um, open-minded about these things we want to help people um, and we have mm. a more progressive kind of mentality towards these things um, but interestingly, I think society has slowly gone backwards. Um, and it's sad to think that people suffering from drug addiction or any other kinds of addiction or any other things don't really deserve a second chance or chances to, yeah. um, be better and get out of that rut. And I think we don't look at thing i think nowadays we just see a problem and we're like oh how do we solve this problem instead of looking at yeah. what is the root of the problem why do we have these problems in the first place why are people um yeah. having addictions um, you know is it because of family and why are why is their family going through these kind of things and we don't really look at that we just look at well people are not obviously not working hard enough that's why they're not you know getting a good job and it's just not that simple um no, no. but obviously uh, society and I guess government isn't really doing much and to no, a extent, you, they don't really care no they don't care and I, I don't I don't think it's very I don't actually think it's a very um what's the word I don't actually think it's a constructive way of thinking about it either because because if you if you look at me like you know 19 years old washed up completely useless probably costing the taxpayer a fortune going to prison and stuff you know what I mean mm-hmm. Now, now look at me. Thirty years on, I, I, I am a taxpayer. I'm a contributor. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't claim yeah. benefits anymore. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and uh, I mean, I mean, like, 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 like t- taking aside my creative output, which people yeah. can judge for themselves. But, but you know, the fact is, you know, I, 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 I work. I pay taxes now. You know what I mean? So, so you can you can kind of chuck people on the scrap heap, and the people on the scrap heap will cost you money until they eventually keel over and die. But, you know, I, I just don't think it's it's uh, not only is it uncompassionate, it's just not, you know, an, an unhumanist. It's just not. I don't actually think it's very, very intelligent in the long run to kind of just just chuck people aside like that. I just don't think it yeah. works. No, 100 um, yeah. percent. But, yeah, I, I think it's just great that you're so open about these things. And hopefully, um, I guess, with your story and your experience people will learn from it and the younger generation I guess will you know create change I mean it's always yeah. about the younger generation trying to like yeah. as we can see nowadays with social media and technology it is it's slowly changing um like people are being more yeah. progressive people are thinking about others a bit more um so yeah hopefully things will change for the better in the future um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Were you going to ask another question? Sorry. No. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, and I guess I think that kind of links um, closely to, you know, the recent play that you were in, uh, No Particular Order, mm. uh, which is written by Joel Tan, um, mm. a Singaporean playwright based in London currently. Um, and just a quick note for those who 
don't know about the play or haven't seen it, it's basically kind of an apocalyptic play that, you know, charts the fate of a society under like a despot. Um, and it kind of goes through different uh, lives of like bureaucrats, uh, soldiers, tour guides, and also ornithologists. Um, so why I say it's related is because the play um, talks about society, which is becoming more apocalyptic, where, you know, there's no compassion. People don't really essentially give a shit about other people. Yeah. Um, so, it, I mean, for those who haven't seen the play, like, can you tell us a bit more about your role? Um, and also, I guess, what made you decide to um, pursue this role? Well, I, I mean, I play, like we, there's four of us in it and we play lots of different roles in it. So um, I'm, I'm very drawn to the idea that, 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 that a group of actors can play everything in a play. They can play perpetrators, they can play victims, they can play despots, they can play, they can play people who are oppressed by despots, they can play clever people, stupid people, nasty people, kind people, you know, because that's the gamma of kind of human experience. Um, I, 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 I like plays that are about big subjects, like, 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 like stuff like that. Do you, do you, I, mean, I mean, it is, I think there's a lot of resonances in, in, in our world and what's going on in our world. And especially, you know, although it's not overtly Asian in its theme, I, I feel like for people of Asian diasporas, you know, we, we, we kind of, there, there, there's, there's a special flavour in there, I think, which we kind of get, you know, I mean? yeah. because we, 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 we come from heritages that, you know, have a history of being quite oppressive and quite yeah. dictatorial and quite, you know, we, we, we kind of like, it's kind of ingrained in our DNA in a lot of ways. Yeah. And um, so, so that's what I mean. And I was, you know, I did have to make a choice about it because I'd written a play for, for a bunch of students at a drama school called Aura and I was supposed to direct that play. And, and they, so, so they asked me to do no particular order and I said, oh, I can't, you know what I mean? And, asked me again I read it again I thought okay okay so I got another director to direct my play for for the drama students and and she she was a phenomenal director and I was a phenomenal production so that all worked out for the best you know what I mean yeah. uh, but but I guess that's what drew me to it just felt like a big story a, a timely story it just resonated had a lot of resonances with what's going on in the world today I think generally yeah yeah I, I completely agree when I was uh, watching the play I a lot of it is very relatable and especially as you said like with society nowadays and um I think that's what's great about like plays and like you know musicals what like mm -hmm. anything creative is that you can talk about something very serious but in a very um I don't know how to say it like I want to use the word creative again but it's it's not straightforward but you're also touching all these you know, yeah. quote unquote controversial topics that people don't really want to talk about in real life. Yeah, um, completely. But you yeah. kind of showcase it and you bring these yeah. things up and make people think about it and therefore they talk more about it um, and hopefully realize yeah. how messed up our society is and what no, can no. we do to make it better, you know? C completely. I mean, I mean, I I um I suppose if I have a reputation as an artist, it's of being quite political, right? you know. And so people think that's heavy and, and kind of, yeah. uh, you know, intellectual and difficult. And, and actually, to me, the primary purpose of drama is to, to entertain people. Yeah. If you're not entertaining people, it's like I say, when I wrote the play for, for the drama, suit, it's all about an oppressive society. It's two and a half hours long. It would get standard ovations every night from young people because, yeah. because I kind of loaded it with, with, with shock, horror, comedy. Do you know what I mean? Loaded yeah. it with that. And, and like, like, you know, you mentioned The Good Immigrant. Um, I mean, the essay I wrote in that is inherently comical. It's inherently comedic. I tried to write with my child's voice because that was me as a seven-year-old kid. And, yeah. and I often try and do that. I try and write with my child's voice, yeah. which, which and, and, and people sometimes, I, I, it is interesting. It is interesting because people sometimes say my writing is angry. A lot of Asians say that, which is interesting. Oh. So this play I wrote for, 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 for drama students, none of them were Asian in the end. And well, a couple of them were mixed race of, of different Asian diasporas, but not East Asian yeah. diasporas. But, but the word they used to describe the writing was beautiful. They kept saying it's beautiful, wow. beautiful, beautiful. And 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 I, I I think that's it. Like, like like when I read what I wrote in The Good Immigrant, it just doesn't. I just don't think of it as angry. I think of it as like funny. It's just yeah. funny. It's you know, um, although there's there's a horrific side to, every, to you know when you write about things like racism, about oppression, yeah. about violence. There's a horrific side to it. There's no doubt about it. But 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 you have to 
you know, any any form of creativity you do, I, I firmly believe that it has to entertain people, it has to be accessible to people as well. Yeah. I don't want to write anything that's heavily over over intellectual. I, I'd like to think that that you know, you know, apart from the language barrier, which is always a problem, I'd like to think that that an 80-year-old Cantonese auntie could yeah. come and watch my play and watch the story. I'd like to think that, you know. Yeah. I, lo- I love that, how you, the, the ex- it's kind of accessibility, right? Uh, making sure that no matter someone who's super young to like super old, they can enjoy the play and enjoy the things you write. I think that's yeah. great because, yeah, th- I think that's really important because sometimes you see like books or plays being written in a very, you know, know. They use like fancy languages, like flowery words and to almost like kind of show off that or oh, like this is some kind of um yeah i guess I upper class enjoyment but it shouldn't yeah, yeah, be like yeah, that yeah. it should be enjoyed by every single person because it should be accessible to everyone i mean that's how people get into you know those kind of industries because they realize oh i can even though i may not come from a middle class background i can still pursue this because you know it's yeah, yeah. accessible for everybody um and you mentioning how people think your writing is angry. I'm actually quite surprised because when I read your passage from The Good Immigrant, I thought it was great. Um, and, you know, yeah. you were talking about that wrestler and I didn't yeah. even know who that person is until no. I searched him up and realized, oh, it's, this, it's a white guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> a Japanese character. I was like a bit confused. Um, but You know, the funny <laughs> thing about that was I had to put a disclaimer at the end because, because my, the way I remembered it, it was yeah. everywhere. It was all over the place. I mean, th- th- there's a brilliant bit where, where I wrote about um, growing up in Wiltshire and or Somerset. No, that's it. I'm just, I'm a bit confused. I wrote about growing up in Somerset, and my mum read it, and she went, "Love, oh, we lived in Wiltshire." Mm-hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, but but even when you go to Kendo Nagasaki himself, the wrestler, yeah, I had in my head, I had another wrestler in my head. This guy, and it, it was a guy called Kung Fu. Who used to wear this kind of florid dragons and everything. Oh. And, and Kendo, if you look at Kendo, he's very, very drab, actually. He's very, very hot belly, just nothing, you know, plain black trunks. The only thing was the mask. Yeah. And so you couldn't, you couldn't tell that he wasn't Asian yeah. when he was in the ring until, like I said, the end of, when they unmasked him. And it was like, it was a, it was a shock for me. And, and, and yeah. a shock I've maybe never recovered from. <laughs> <laughs> um and i guess what i'm really interested to know a bit more is you know you said that you're a mixed race um yeah how was that like growing up for you because you also mentioned there's a lot of racism growing up yeah Um, how did you manage them and how did it affect you i guess like growing up i mean this is you know i mean i mean i did this um project for somebody uh to before lockdown and, and she basically sat me down with a camera right there right, right in my face and she asked me questions and she said describe your describe your school years in one word and I just went trauma I mean it, it just was it was it was horrible. I used to get surrounded by a bunch of kids every day who were just chanting me Chinese Japanese dirty again and again and again and again yeah yeah you would run up in the playground and say you Chinese I said, yeah like, like a kid you go yeah I am and they go that and they just literally you, you know, and 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 getting kind of beaten up and spat out and uh, you know, I, I, everything under the sun. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And and to the point where, like I say, like I wrote in in the Good Immigrant, Chinese and Japanese became synonymous to me at that age because I just thought I, I'm both of those things. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because people people are calling me that all day, and 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 obviously our knowledge in those days. This is the, this is the seventies in, in Britain. Our knowledge of Asian cultures was not great, you know. So I didn't, you know. There's a whole history between China and Japan. They, there's been wars, and but I, it just became all the same thing to me. It became, it just became a mix of other and you're not us, and and it was it was very very hard, and especially you know coming when half my family were white. That that was even stranger in a way because. Yeah, it was. It just was strange. I wasn't, you know, and I wasn't going home to a community. You know, I mean, we did not live. You know, one of the difficult things about being East or Southeast Asian in Britain is the history. Our immigration history is not. We've not. We don't live in communities. We we kind of like what people have done is moved here and tried to get as far away from other 
East to Southeast Asian people as possible. Not out of not out of hatred, but just because you want to be the only, you know. And, and at one point, this is this is this is a fascinating fact, and it's probably not the case anymore because yeah. Chinese takeaways are in trouble. But at one point, the Chinese, despite being one of the smallest ethnic minority groups in Britain, were the only ethnic minority group in Britain to have a presence in every single borough in the United Kingdom. Wow. You know, so you go to the Orkney Islands, and there was a Chinese takeaway in, in one of the villages there. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. But, but what what the, what that leads to is a sense of isolation yeah. and vulnerability, um, and it's only really with the rise of of of, of the internet that, that, I, that I think I think I think you, what you see now is 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 people like yourself doing doing you know wanting to find that sense of you know. I don't know. I mean, I mean, community is a dangerous word, and and it gets it gets appropriated by people and used very badly. People use it as a weapon to yeah. to 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 seize power and ostracize others. But but community only works for me if it if it's kind of loose and nefarious and not policed. So it should be, you know, a, 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 a tolerant and and I don't know inclusive place. You, you know, it, it should feel like that, and and that is. So when you asked about my involvement in the community earlier, I, I've never really thought about it because I didn't know a community when I was growing up and I didn't, you know, in a, in a weird kind of way, I, I just think communities have kind of sprung up in the last few years. Um, and, 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 and so the, 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 that's a complete accident in many ways. But, but yeah, the, the, the racism that I experienced as a child was absolutely horrific. And, and, and I've since discovered I'm not alone because, because I, I, I'm working on this... Um, experimental theatre piece with, with with Chinese arts now and it it, it, it you know and it was Ant, Anting, Anting Chang is the artistic director of uh, Chinese arts now she suggested I write something loosely based on my life so it is but obviously heavily fictionalized and heavily yeah. kind of like uh, you know and 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 there there are people I've had in the room and who read the script and they go god this is this is so upsetting because like this this I experienced this as a child People much younger than me. I thought maybe maybe it was a nineteen seventies thing. You know, I mean, no, no, no. People much younger than me, like, like millennials yeah. and stuff. You know, going, oh my God, this is really painful for me. And, and 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 I think a lot of us have had that experience. And and because we're quite isolated, we carry that on our own. We yeah. kind of carry it and internalize it. And it's really, really, it's really, it's really kind of hurtful and damaging. I think you know. So yeah, it was a huge, huge deal. And being mixed race, strange. My, one of my earliest memories, you know. Is my mum pushing me and my brother in a pram and, and people coming, oh, they're lovely, aren't they? Did you adopt them? Because my mum was white, you know. So 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 yeah, it was always like not 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 belonging one 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 place or another, you know. Yeah. Wow. Um that's really difficult to hear because uh -huh. we I guess the younger generation obviously we do face racism and things like that, but we're also incredibly privileged in a sense that we grew up in a society that's slightly more better. Um, there's, yeah. there's still like, you know, like words thrown at us, but it's not as physical. Like at least you don't get beaten up. And I think that's, yeah, it's incredibly upsetting and sad. And the fact that you can't even share that with everyone, because as you said, you go home and, most of your family are white, so it's very, I guess, very hard for them to relate in a sense. And oh, it was really did you hard. feel comfortable? Like, did you feel comfortable sharing it with them or telling? Oh, them your mom? no, it was very hard. It was very hard. My 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 dad had no mechanism for this stuff at all. My dad was was basically brought to Birmingham from yep. Singapore at the age of eight. He was kind of wrenched out of a tropical island wow. with a huge, loving Hokkien Chinese family. Yeah into Birmingham in the middle of winter with a stepfather who banned him from speaking Chinese wow. with an outside toilet in the middle of winter. I, I, you know, I don't think his mental health has ever recovered from that. Yeah. So, so trying to talk to my dad about it and you know, you remember my, my dad as well. He had two kids by the time he was like 18. Yeah. So I, I mean, I can't even get my head around it. He was, he was 22, 23 and he had, he, he, he's got a five-year-old kid saying to him, look, they're calling me, they're calling me a, C word every day. Yeah. How does he deal with that? He couldn't process it at all. My mum would say things like, oh love, you know, you've got you've got to learn to take a joke, you know. <laughs> you know, it, 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 you know it, it, this is weird as well. I, I've written about this a lot. My mum's favorite, favorite TV when we was young was the Benny Hill show. Yeah. Benny Hill, for people watching this who don't know, Benny Hill was 
a comedian in inverted commas. I don't know. I, I watch his stuff back down on YouTube and I, I can't, I cannot see very much funny in it at all. Yeah. But he was this kind of like popular entertainer of the 1970s, eight, early 80s, who was on prime time. Yeah. And he used to do various characters. And one of his characters was someone called Chow Main. And he would literally come on and say, Oh, so I, Chow Main, I'm here to say to you. It, it, it was that ridiculous. Yeah. That was my mum's favorite TV show. So, so you, okay. <laughs> you, you, you're kind of like, oh, your mum's going, oh, he's need funny. And you're going like, that ain't funny, mum. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it was, yeah, no, there was, there was, there, I didn't feel comfortable talking from Bala at all. And it, it was very, very hard and, 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 and probably caused a lot of problems, you know, in, in our relationships, in our, in our, yeah, it, it probably did. At the time, obviously, I didn't know. I didn't know any other different, you know, I didn't know any different. But but yeah, there's there, there, there's there's no doubt about it, you know that that that, that there's 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 rifts and fissures there, you know. And like I say, my 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 dad who now has some sort of Alzheimer's, like I say, I don't I don't think his mental health has ever recovered from from, yeah. from you know from, from his upbringing and his 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 immigrant experience. Yeah, yeah, that's that's incredibly sad. I think the older generation, you know, like our parents or grandparents, especially those who have moved to like a Western country at a young age or later mm. on in life. Yeah. I don't think they ever, ever had the chance to just sit down and reflect about, you know, their life or, um, you know, the hardships, they just kind of grinded and just that's their mechanism of dealing with life. They just kept yeah. going on and just, you know, yeah. all they did was like, you know, because when you tell them, oh, like I'm going through this, like going through hardship, they're like, oh, just stay strong, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's just a joke. Laugh about it. It's okay, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just keep going. And it's always about keep going. And yeah, it's yeah, it's really sad. I think sometimes we just need to like stop and think and reflect. And but I don't. I guess they don't really have the privilege to do that because life is was and is I guess still incredibly hard for a lot of them um yeah, but, yeah. well thank you for very much for sharing that it's oh, okay. yeah it's it's very hard to hear because it's such a it's very personal and also um as I said a lot of times quite upsetting um but I think that it would definitely resonate with a lot of people um yeah uh, yeah it's incredibly yeah. inspiring um, oh. and I guess just to like, I, I have a final question is, you know, what is then your advice for, you know, younger Asian kids who don't really know what they're doing or a bit lost in life? What would your advice be for them? One of the, okay. Social media has massive downsides, but it always yeah. has upsides and that you can find each other. You can find people like yourself doing podcasts and things and, you know, and, and you can find, you know, there are all these kind of like community groups that have sprung up on um, Instagram and stuff like that, which is, you know, there's a lot now. I mean, I, they weren't, I mean, I mean, I mean, you got about three years, people weren't there, you know. Yeah. You can find that stuff out. And, and I think, um, I think getting involved in any kind of anti racism is really good. Um, Working with people of other minorities is really good. Black people, South Asian people, you know, Middle Eastern people is, is, is really good. Honestly, I'm going to sound really weird. Writing, I think, is an amazing thing to do. And, and like, we kind of think, this is the other thing, it's, it's like, I, the one thing I want to demystify is writing. Pe pe people think you have to be some sort of genius to write. And yeah. I, 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 I think that, that that genius is inside all of us. And, and we, we just have to locate it and be brave enough to keep going when it feels awful. And, and honestly, the first time you write anything, the first draft of anything is generally rubbish. That's the same for everybody. Yeah really is and and um it's interesting because because i don't know if you know I, i'm i'm associate artistic director of um, chinese arts now which is, which is a combined arts company and, and yeah. we're running this thing at the moment which we're going to keep running you know we're going to do it again called finding our creative voice which is which is basically it's 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 a kind of entry level um short short course initiative which you don't have to have any kind of performance or creative background to Love take it, part yeah. in. And we ask a nominal fee, which is 20 quid. And that is literally because if you put something out for free, people will register and they won't turn up. 
You know what I mean? So so yeah. so so if people pay, they have to turn up. Yeah. And what we then do is 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 the 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 money the money that the fee that people pay, we then use it as a bursary for people who have really got no money and say that I can't. I need the travel expense to be given to them. Yeah. So the the the, the, the idea is myself and another facilitator, Lexi and me, we 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 take the participants through through a kind of creative exercise for them to create stories and 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 then look at a means of expressing that story whether they literally just want to read it out whether they want to perform something whether they want to dance play music make films on their mobile phones whatever yeah so so it's all about you know kind of unlocking creative potential um in in east and southeast asian heritage people because i don't think that's encouraged in us a lot you know if if if, if you look at i mean i i don't like i, I you look at I mean, I, I'm my my family roots in Singapore. It's not encouraged. You, 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 what, what, what is encouraged is for you to work hard and make lots of money and be, be corporate, work in an office. I think, <clears throat> I think in the People's Republic of China, it's very much about well, you, you know, obviously they want to make big films, big, 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 big um, superhero propaganda. They obviously want to do that. And they want the traditional theatre forms because it yeah. brings in a lot of tourism. But generally, they don't want people to have a creative voice because a creative voice would lead them to question things like yeah. the, the lives they're living, the governance they're living under, the, the, the gender relations in society, the, the race relations in, in China. You know, they don't want those things questioned. You know? Yeah. So, and, and when we come here, we're kind of... It, inculcated with the idea that, that the, you know, one of the things like, like people would talk about the lack of East Southeast Asian actors on TV. And like I say, I think TV is not the be all and end all, but, but one of the reasons people would give, they say, Oh, it's something to do with Asian cultures. You know, we, we don't, I don't really believe that's true. I think, I think a lot of it is first generation immigrant parents looking at the TV and going, well, you're never going to make a living doing that. Yeah, I think it's a practical choice, you know. What I mean, because mm-hmm. I know this for a fact. When they auditioned the role of Cho Chang and Harry Potter, the queue went round the block. The queues of people to audition came from all over the country, went round the block. Yeah. So the idea that 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 that, that people of East and Southeast Asian heritage do not want to perform is a complete myth. We want to perform. We're very much, you know, I it, it's it. You know, it's in everyone's culture, and it's very much in our culture. You know, I, yeah. I, I think we, I think, I think if you go back to to, to the roots of, like, the, I mean, well, the one the one I know about is Chinese culture. If you go back to the roots of the Shang Dynasty, the the you, you know, it was all about music, singing, performance. You know, there was a lot about that, and there's these there's these, there's these songs and things that are lost. There, there's this thing called the Chutsi, the Song of the South. You know, what I mean? which is which is that they've got the poems, they've got, but but no one knows the exact form it was performed in. So fascinating stuff really from the dawn of civilization before the word Chinese was even invented or even thought of, you know, this is a fact you go back 2000 years, you, you go to what we call China now and you meet Confucius and you say, well, you're Chinese Confucius would go, what do you mean? I'm Chinese. I'm, 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 I'm from the, I'm from the, 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 the kingdom of, um, of Chu or whatever. I, I can't remember which one he's from now, but Shandong, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. there, there, there were different, different kingdoms, you know, different dukedoms. So, 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 it, it, it's it's um, I'm going a long way around this, but 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 you were saying about 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 people experience racism. I would say you know find your expressive voice, find your creative voice, find your political voice, because one of the things as well we've lacked is is, is some sort of you know again the history of immigration. You go about a hundred years there were, there were black people and Southeast Asian people who were councillors, who were political figures. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And this is happening now. This is happening now. Like we've got Sarah Owen, who's, who's a mixed race uh, Malaysian Chinese woman, who's the first ever kind of Labour MP of East Asian heritage. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know a couple of my friends uh, were just elected onto Lewisham Council. How you, Tam Edison Quinn? You, you, you know, it, it's it's that kind. Of, and when I talk about politics, I, look, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to get party political here. I'm not talking about being being some corporate kind of Tory kind of kind of let's cozy up to Boris Johnson. Let, let's yeah. okay his racism. Let, 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 let's team up with the with the government of China to make lots of money. I'm talking about proper activist grassroots politics. Yeah. That's about people. That's about do you know what I mean. That that will make a difference. That will make a huge difference. And if you want to work in the media, like please put yourself forward and go through it. And there will be knocks and it'll be difficult. But 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 you know you know I mean you were talking about the first generation having that thing about 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 just you know just going through it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't I don't know the word, but I know the Chinese character for endure is literally is literally a, a knife over a heart. 
You know what I mean? The, yeah. the heart's there, the knife's there, and the heart has to endure over the knife. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's 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 really hard. Life is hard. And I I do think I do think like when you talk about your generation being privileged. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I I also feel very much for your generation because because the world is a dark place at the moment. It's it's very very tough, and it's got quite nasty. And I I think I think the politics in Britain has got really toxic and really racist. Really, really reactionary, really, really ch- trying to trying to drag us back to a version of Britain which they think they had once, trying to drag us back in a right wing way. And, and of course, they will never succeed in because you can't you can't drag things back. You can't do it. It'll just become something else. But but yeah, I mean, I mean, th- there's just a lot there about 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 finding each other and about 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 kind of being there for each other and, and learning to tolerate each other and work with each other and and, and be creative, be expressive, and, and, and be be be. Be true and be honest. I think, yeah, you know? because because a lot of the time I think the media as well. Sorry, I'm going on a lot. A lot of the time in the media we're playing versions of ourselves. We're we're, we're turning up a, a, a lunar new year, you know, in Chinatown, going, oh yeah, this this is our lion dance and this is our lovely, you, you, you know, which is great, which is great. But but look, this is our lion's dance, and we're not represented in the media. We suffer a lot of racism. We yeah. suffer a lot of discrimination. You know that that is you know it's just literally about being honest. I think, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's quite a long answer. No, no, no. I think I, I think that was great. Um, I really agree with a lot of things you said, and you know the thing about politics as well. I think, yeah, people think it's such a, a scary word to say. Um, yeah, of it, it, is. it shouldn't be because, I mean, if we look at you know the issues that we're going through in society, it shouldn't even be quote unquote political. Like you know, a lot no. of things to do with human rights, a lot of things to do with yeah. having equal rights, or you know, just being compassionate towards other people. That shouldn't be political, right? Uh, no, but somehow. No people always related to politics which doesn't well, really make sense you know but it's being politicized yeah today's climate like you get that thing about the, the rwanda plane the other day and it, it got stopped yeah. by the european court of human rights so what, what you get is this whole thing in the right-wing press about lefty left lefty woke lawyers yeah. this is not left this is not left-wing politics this is just yeah. this is just humanitarianism you know this yeah. is just like people should not be shipped to a country they don't want to go to mm-hmm. and let's just remember this there were seven people on that plane but before we forget one of them was vietnamese so we were in 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 a, in, a, in a select group of seven who were going to be on that plane. Yeah, we were represented. Yeah, you know, people of our diaspora are very much in the firing line for that sort of thing. Yeah, no, I completely agree, and I think that was really good advice for people. And I really hope that like people listening to your story and you know your advice would feel a bit more inspired and a uh, bit more encouraged to and motivated to pursue something that they love and be more creative and kind of use their voice to inspire other people yeah yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's it for today like thank you so All much right. again for joining oh, me thanks, like, Steph. Oh.